Hello and welcome to Just In Case You Missed It, your Sunday edition of Chasing the Impossible. I'm your host, Derek Floyd. Today we've got another incredible replay from the Chasing the Impossible interviews from just last year. This one I know is going to grab you right away because it's with a producer who worked with Will I Am of Black Eyed Peas. He started off though playing drums in church, but then went on to become a Berkeley school grad, but then pushed himself to become even better and his story is so inspirational, I know you're going to want to catch this one. Let me remind you, all of our newer segments come on on Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. And of course, the Sunday edition at 5 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Pacific. But let's dive into the story of this gentleman who has multiple Grammys, but has a story that can definitely inspire you with a heart of gold and lots of wisdom to share. Let's take a look at the interview with Keith Harris. Hello everyone, Derek Floyd here, Beautiful Now Podcast. Welcome to another edition of Chasing the Impossible. This is the segment where I interview special guests who happen to have accomplished impossible things on their journey to let you know that no matter what, no matter how hard your dream is, no matter how far away, how impossible it seems, if it's still worth chasing, then you can accomplish it too, just like they did. Maybe hard, maybe a grind, but don't give up. You can make it happen. Now, if you enjoy the content you see here on the channel, please hit me with a like and a subscribe to let me know. That way I'll get you the most updated content as soon as it's available. And if you really enjoy the content, do me a favor and hit the share button because we want to make sure everyone lives this world uplifted, encouraged, and inspired. Last but not least, the content's always brought to you by and powered by IK Multimedia and Lewitt Microphones. Now, today's special guest is someone who's young who seems to have accomplished a lot, almost a veteran in the music industry for a young age. But he started out playing drums at church, like most of us played at church in the beginning. But now he's playing in arenas all over the world with Black Eyed Peas. As a music director with Fergie, with so many others, he's worked with Madonna, he's worked with Estelle, you name it, and this young man has probably accomplished part of it. He's a Grammy award winning producer and songwriter now, music director, and of course, a drummer. He has made his impossible come true. Would you help me welcome my good friend, Mr. Keith Harris. Keith, you there, buddy? I'm here. I'm ready to rock. How are you doing? <laughs> man, what's good, brother? What's good? You all right? Uh, everything's all right, man. I, I can't complain. I mean, you staying safe, washing hands, giving this COVID nonsense? Where you at? <laughs> yeah, I got two kids, so we, we're consistently washing our hands, and uh, we, yeah, we're staying safe for sure. Got man, to. I mean, and you just know... Like, where'd this thing come from, right? Like, it's all over the place, and you just got to be safe, right? Yeah, you know, I mean, we, we're years behind. Like, Japan, they've been wearing masks for years, so we're, we're just true catching that. To be true clean. that. <laughs> true that. True that, man. True that. Well, I mean, it's good to know. I'm glad you're here. Glad you were here to sh share your story, man. I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to the subscribers. My pleasure, man. I, I'm, I'm really happy to be here and, and share some uh, some apples and wisdom. I love, I love it. I love it. So with so many musical talents at disposal, man, you know, you've done a little bit of everything from the drums to engineer, producer, I mean, all under your belt. Which one of those actual talents started you on your journey? How'd you get started? Uh, it was actually the drums, man. Um, I started out playing drums uh, when I was 10. And I started out playing in church. I'm uh, from the south side okay. of Chicago. So yes, sir. New Friendship Missionary Baptist Church. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> go ahead on. Me, go ahead on. They gave me a shot, man. <laughs> you know, AME. <laughs> AME was an American Methodist Episcopal, something like that. Yeah, that, that's, too, yeah. that's too many. That's too many. Yeah. That's too many. I, I'm just Baptist. I'm just Baptist. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, I remember them days, man. Come on. Uh, come it, on. Yeah, it all started at church, man. Um, my mom took me and my sister there when I was around 10. Um, you know, learned a lot from watching the older musicians. Um, Nor, Nor Leslie Lofton was the music, uh, the minister of music, and the man who literally taught me everything on the drums but never gave me a lesson, Mr. Mm. Henry Jones, uh, mm. we call him Hank. 
Uh, he was an amazing force in my life as far as, you know, even drum posture, how you sit on the seat, how you carry yourself as a man. Uh, uh, I just learned so much from just watching him, and he never gave me a drum lesson. So mm. um, uh, that was the start for me, and, and that, that sparked the fire for music, and, you know, it, it led me to this conversation today. Wow. And, you, and, and people don't realize how, and I tell people this all the time, that people are watching you. And you don't realize all the time who's watching your life, who's watching what you're doing. Mm-hmm. And you were watching this man all those years. Oh, yeah. And, and didn't even really realize what you were pulling in, what you were gathering from him. But our lives are an open book. They're a movie for most people. And we got to really make sure we're walking in excellence, walking in integrity, because people are watching, yeah. you know? Oh, yeah. Like I said, you know, because I didn't grow up with my father. Um, so having these positive male role models in church especially with uh, something that I love to do, I had a passion with, they're very in- influential. Like, mm-hmm. you know, you know, Nor Leslie, our, our uh, minister of music, you know, he would always wear dope suits with crazy <laughs> ties and crazy socks. You know, he would like have <laughs> some like Mickey Mouse tie with some matching socks. So me, I'm like, oh, that's so dope. I'm in high school, I wear my suits, the jazz band and stuff like that. And guess who got all the crazy ties and the crazy socks, you know? <laughs> <laughs> that is cool, so, well, man. Leslie, thank you. That was, that, I got that from you. <laughs> yes, sir. You watching this episode of Leslie, look out. Look out for the Mickey Mouse tie and them socks. <laughs> Save me a pair. Save me a pair. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, man, how did growing up in the church influence your musical style, your ability? Well, it influenced my musical ability because, you know, growing up in church, you have to be able to play so many styles of music because one song may have five different types of music in it. You go from a Latin groove, and then you go into a rock groove, and then you go into a bossa nova. (laughs) It's true. It's true. (laughs) Folks don't realize church players can play. Oh, man. Really, really play. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And your retention is crazy. You ain't reading Mm -hmm. no music. (laughs) <laughs> yep, you, and you and you better feel you better feel the groove when we change. Boop, boop. You better exactly. be ready to go. You better be yep. ready. You better sound like five different drummers on one song. <laughs> <laughs> so literally, wow. man, just doing all of that, learning that, and and really watching the choir director because you know that's the the leader of everything that's going on. Prepared me for the Black Eyed Peas gig because I equated um, you know Will I Am to the choir director. You know, mm-hmm. so he's directing everything that's going on stage and everything rhythmically. You know, I'm watching him. I'm catching his accents and beats and the way that he flows. Sometimes he'll do a, a rhythmic pattern and I'll try to catch him. And then we play off each other. Mm-hmm. So, um, like I said, those days in church, uh, just being very attentive to the choir director. You know, they trying to move their hands and having the band start, stop and do all those wonderful things. Prepared me for the, for the real, real, the real deal. <laughs> mm-hmm. And since music was your passion early on, I mean, you were able to go to a performing arts high school, right? Curie Performing yep. Arts, something like that? Yep. Curie, uh, what was it? Marie, I can't even say her last name. Man, all I know is Curie Performing Arts. Let's just stay right there. We'll go with it. Marie know. Curie, that's all we need. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so how? There, yeah. It was a performing arts high school. Mm-hmm. Now it's just a, 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 a high school that's really good at basketball. <laughs> oh, boo! Yeah, okay, play, you know? okay. Well, <laughs> when you when you went there, though, how vital was that education to you and who you are as an artist now going oh, to that performance high school? Listen, it it was pivotal. Like, it really let me know that this is what I wanted to do professionally. Um, from you know, like I said, being in jazz band and my my band instructor, Mr. Tyrone Hines, doing orchestra with Mr. Dale Crane. You know, learning to read music, uh, doing all those things. And then also, too, uh, back in those days, um, I had another teacher who had an electronic synth lab named Mr. Reginald Willis. That's when I first got into programming and learning how to use computers and, you know, program. I used to program like jazz and big band arrangements on the keyboard. What? You know? Yeah, that's what I used to do. Like, I was all, like, smooth jazz <laughs> and, 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 and big band. Nice. I wasn't doing no hip-hop beats back in the 90s. <laughs> wow. That's crazy, man. But, but see, you had, a, you had an appreciation for great music early on, though. I did. I did. Because, like I said, those things were very 
pivotal and uh, influential in, in my upbringing as a musician, just being able to arrange and hear horn parts and, and be able to program horn parts for each section. I used to do all of that stuff. Um, wow. The trumpets, the saxophone one, the berry, the tenor sax, and then the drums, programming drum solos. I, I was real geeked out on that stuff, man. It was crazy. Wow. But so yeah, so you went from... You went from playing the drums at church to going to this high school to be taught to do even more sequencing, to get exposed to even more types of music and really broadening your depth of understanding and, and sequencing and synthesis, all that stuff. And then you said, I'm going to Berkeley? How did that happen? Yeah. And what did that do for your, to your, to your, to your career? Well, we had a couple of former Curie alumni that went to, uh, to Berkeley. So the teacher from the Electronic Music Lab, Reginald Willis, he was like, you got to go to Berkeley. He recommended it to me. He's like, you have to go. We had a, a, a student, Anthony Wanzi, who went to uh, Berkeley from Curie. And another uh, lady, her name was Claudette. I forget her last name. But um, they were like, you're the next one. You got to go. <laughs> so um, for me, it was like Berkeley or bus. I had no plan yeah. B. There was wow. no other schools I applied for. You know, I applied for Berkeley, got a, a, a partial scholarship, and um, yeah, I mean, the rest is history, man. So so what did you learn from there? What really did you soak up to make you part of the artist that you are now? Now, Berkeley was a great place to be. Um, I've learned, I learned so much, and I think the most important thing isn't really the education, it's the network of people that you create for the rest of your life. I have so many friends and still friends to this day that I went to school with and I see every day, you know, like 20 some odd years and counting. Um, mm -hmm. These relationships are very pivotal because a lot of the people I went to school with are, are execs in the industry. Mm -hmm. They're amazing musicians touring with people, uh, amazing producers. And, you know, all of these people came from the same dorm rooms and, and dorms that I was in <laughs> back in the 90s, you know? Wow, and, wow. And I mean, and in Berkeley, uh, education really taught me a lot. Uh, it taught me a lot about arranging, even more so, um, in, in being able to uh, to write charts, because that's how I got the Black Eyed Peas gig, from being able to write down numerous songs and being able to recall them at the drop of a hat and, and being able to uh, perform them seamlessly by being able to write out my, my drum charts and stuff like that. So, I mean, from Berkeley education with, with, uh, with writing music, uh, I really got into programming and producing. That was my major at Berkeley, music production and engineering. Mm -hmm. So that's where a lot of uh, my basis uh, for production and especially engineering was learned at Berkeley. That's when Pro Tools just came out when I was at Berkeley. Oh, wow. Yeah. Just came just like, out. Uh, who wants to use this computer, man? We got, we got, we want to use this two-inch tape over here. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody remembers tape, man. Tape just had a sound to it, didn't it? Oh, it had a sound, but it was so hard. And I'm just like, you know what? I don't want to be an engineer because if I had to edit this tape and I slice it at the wrong point, <laughs> I, I don't want that pressure, man. I don't want, I don't yeah. want to calibrate tape. I don't want to do all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> wow, wow. Well, it sounds like Berkeley prepared you to, for the next level. You obviously were learning production skills. You were learning how yep. to compose. You were learning how to use the, the latest in technology. You built relationships there, uh, and those relationships still last to this day. Um, so let's say fast forward, was, was being a music producer and an artist, was that the, the, the main goal period from start to finish, or were you thinking you were going to go and do scoring or something? Was it just, I'm going to be a producer, that was the goal? Actually, no. It started out. I just want to play drums. That that had been my my like feeling and my my kind of like my purpose of what I wanted to do because I didn't know anything else. You know, mm. I didn't know anything about production or making beats or writing songs. I just grew up in church. I like to play drums and organ and keyboards and all that stuff. And if I could get on a tour doing that, that would be amazing. That's all. That was I, it. That was the, Give me a tour. That was it. <laughs> that was <laughs> Got it, you. Man. Wow. And, and, and my love and passion for playing drums led me to all these other opportunities. And, um, you know, I, I, it's, it's just the best because I didn't see it coming. 
but I was ready for it when it came. Mm, mm. And everything you learned prepared you for it. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, a lot of people want to rush the progress and the process, but you're in, you're in a certain place for a certain time for a reason. Mm. You know, so you appreciate the place where you are because it's a lot to learn there. And when it's time to graduate, your opportunity will come and then you just be ready to execute. So well spoken. It's like you're in a season on a, for a reason. Learn from that season. Don't rush through that season that you're in. You're supposed to be getting something there where God has you there. Yeah. Once you get what you're supposed to get from that season, you'll get graduated. You'll get, you'll get your, your diploma, so to speak, to the next exactly. adventure that God has for you. So, but we try to rush it. And that's when we mess up. So I appreciate you saying that. That's, that's a blessing right there. Oh, man. Patience is definitely a virtue, but it's practice. You know, you have to practice being patient with yourself. <laughs> you know, it, that's mm. the most important thing. It, it's yeah, okay. Man. It's okay to take your time. Like I said, I was at Berkeley. You know, the thing about Berkeley, most people don't even do four years. They stay for like one or two and then they're out because they either don't like it or they got a gig. I was there mm. for four years, so I'm seeing wow. all my friends get gigs, and man, where's he at? Well, he's on with blah, 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 blah. I'm like, damn mm. it, I'm still here learning, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't want to yeah. learn no more. I want a tour. <laughs> uh, but but look at you now, though. Everything you took them four years to make made a difference. Exactly, and that's why I tell people, you can't compare your path to somebody else's. You have to walk mm. your path. And what's for you is for you in the proper time. So you just take your time and just make sure you're ready for when it comes and mm. build your foundation. The foundation is the most important thing, the foundation of who you are as a person mm. and then who you are as an individual musician and what you have to offer. Those, those well are spoken. very important things. Yeah. Well spoken, well spoken. So give me this then. Fast forward, you come out of Berkeley. How in the yep. world do you meet Richard? My man, you know, young Lord, <laughs> yeah, Lord. And a bad boy. How did that connection happen? Well, actually, um, young Lord did a clinic at Berkeley. That's how I met him. Ah. So he did a clinic at Berkeley, and you know, he was like, you know, anybody got music you want to play? And I had my CD and my beats and stuff. You <laughs> always walk around with your CD, your children yes. carrying all your CDs. Yes. You know? <laughs> <laughs> always be prepared, man. Yeah, I went through it. Well, a couple pages. Oh, let me pull this CD out. You know, play it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the rest is history, man. He gave me an opportunity to uh, kind of be an intern for him in New York, working with him. And of course, he produced a lot of big records for Bad Boy and Big Pun and a lot of hip hop guys. And um, he had me there engineering and um, and um, learning the ropes. And what my job was with him was that this is pre computers, right? Mm -hmm. So he had an MPC 3000, I think it was, and mm -hmm. several keyboards. So my thing was I had to go for every song that he did. I had to go write out the patches, like what's going to what, what's machine A, what's machine B, what's machine C, what's machine D. Mm -hmm. Write down the programs of all the songs and all the settings in the keyboards. So if we have to go track this at the studio, I have to recall Wow. All this song. I have to recall it. That's a lot of work, man. Song. Exactly. And then you got to do <laughs> the zip disk and, and the scuzzy drives. And oh, man. You're going way back. <laughs> go way back. So that was my job as an intern uh, under Young Lord, uh, just learning from him. And then, like I said uh, on another interview, he taught me how to make pop records. And what I mean by that, what's popular to the ear sonically mm, um, mm. because I came from Berkeley learning and had a whole like a lot of facility a lot of mm -hmm. knowledge a lot of chords and big mm -hmm. eight nine finger chords when you do like this but then he's like yo 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 that's too much you, you know let, let's make it simple go let's go to three notes <laughs> yeah oh, yeah play a triad oh my lord okay so, so literally learning how to to produce and, and make music that um uh, that can be interpreted and, and felt by everybody and not just musicians you know that was wow. a very important thing that he taught me back then that's beautiful man that's beautiful i i think um, you know, like you said, you've had a couple mentors, and to have him start off as one of your first mentors is a great leap for most. 
Um, you know, because he, he has a great sense of, of sound, like you said, of pop music, but he has a great sense of what makes the crowd move, what makes people feel right. You know, he's got that, that certain ear, man. So it was good for you to be able to run somebody that was naturally gifted in that space. You know what I mean? And, and oh, to yeah. be able to learn how to put together what he was doing, all the different components, all the different sounds. Even though you were Berkeley taught, he gave you real world experience. You know what I mean? Exactly. Exactly. He helped me to take what I learned in a book and in a classroom and apply it to the real world. And um, some of it I used and some of it I didn't, you know. But it's mm -hmm. like I said, it's great to have the knowledge when I need it and pull from it. And that was the biggest lesson. You don't have to mm. use all your facility at the same time. You use it specific for the task, you know. Yes, and, uh, he really yes. taught, yeah. He really taught me that, and um, yeah, man. And that that's what took me on my path to production, working with um, Young Lord. Mm. So it was so much success, kind of fast. Cause you kind of, I won't say fast, but it it came on you right out of school, and you were able to go right into a great career, starting with him. Um, some people think, oh, they, they never struggled, they never, they never hard, worked through anything hard. Can you tell me about a time where you felt like, man, this is, am I sure I'm going to do this? This is hard. Maybe, maybe you had a failure. You thought this is not supposed to work out for me, or it's a struggle. Because people need to know it's not always straight up. There's hills and valleys in people's path. Can you give me a valley that maybe you went through? Oh yeah, I have several valleys. <laughs> that was so I have a several. Version. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Listen, man, it ain't easy. Uh, I'll just start from number one. Was that I didn't live in New York when I first started working with Young Lord. So what I had to do was drive from Boston to New York, work with a uh, Young Lord from like let's say. Monday till about Wednesday, somewhere around there. Drive back to Boston, play for my church, because I play organ for my church, Grace Church of All Nations in Dorchester. Play Come for on, the church. church. For Come on, Grace Church. <laughs> <laughs> play for the church for one hour. Drove back to New York, right? That's mm. Wednesday. And then Thursday, I'm in New York. Friday, drive back to Boston because I play for a cover band called Felix Brown. So we would play all over New England. So Friday and Saturday, we would have gigs. Some would be in Rhode Island. Some would be in Boston. Some in Maine. It just depends. Wherever I, wherever I at, Sunday morning, I got to drive from wherever I at to church to play for church for 11 o'clock service. Right? <laughs> Finish service and then drive back to New York. Sunday night. Wow. So I did that for three years. Wow, man. You put in the grind. Wow. Oh, oh that's, <laughs> just one, that's just one story. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just it's hearing just that one. reminds me and tells people, and I, I hope you guys are watching this segment, it's not just going to be super easy, pop off, do it. There's a grind to it, and you may have to work oh, extra hard, sure. late hours, yeah. for a long time to get where you're trying to go. Man. For mm. sure, man. And that's just one part of it. I mean, I wow. did that, play for church, play for a cover band, trying to produce. And then my mom passed away while I'm doing all of this stuff. Oh, my goodness. I'm sorry, brother. Right? Oh, no, it's okay. I, I'm, you know, she made a transition because she was battling cancer. So she's okay, definitely okay. a good, you know. Well, got so it, got just her. going she's through good. that, going through bad relationships, mm. you know. Uh, with, with women and stuff like that. Mm. All this stuff culminated, man. It was like a big ball of stress, you know? Mm. And and the last thing was my the passing of my mom where I just had to let go of a lot of negativity mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and really had to decide what I was going to do with my life. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Was I going to continue bad relationships was mm -hmm. I going to continue this driving back and forth? But I forgot to mention my pa the the pastor of the church I was playing for and doing all that driving for. You fired me because I didn't <laughs> live in Boston. What? Right? <sighs> wow. But I was still wow. never late, never missed the service. Blah 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 blah. But he so fired. I got yep yeah, fired me from the church. So you feel the church hurt? Like I sacrificed yeah. did all this driving. And all this sacrifice for this church to make it what it was. And I've done amazing things for that church. So mm -hmm. got that hurt, right? Got relationship yeah. hurt. Then mm. you got you know, the, the passing of your mama hurt. 
And all this stuff, man, just was building up. And then once my mom passed, I made that decision that I have to let go of negative energy mm. to pursue my goals and what I wanted to do. And as soon as I did that, that's when I got a call from a good friend of mine who went to Berkeley. Um, his name was Adam Smirnoff. And he recommended me uh, to do this gig with Prince Board, the um, um, musical director with the Black Eyed Peas, but it was for another group called Star 69. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. some random show, nothing major, nothing big, you know, did the, did the gig, hit it off with Prince. Mm -hmm. And that was the start of our relationship that got me into the Black Eyed Peas. Wow. And he called me and said, oh, we want to do a three month tour. Uh, uh, Black Eyed Peas want to do a three month tour. You down? You want to play? And I'm just like, okay, sure. Mm -hmm. It's three months. Why not? Mm -hmm. Three months turned into 17 years and counting. Oh, wow. For real? You've been with them 17 years, bro? Yep. 17 wow. years, two Grammys, a lot of records sold, a lot of <laughs> tours, been around the world about three times, couple passports. Man. Like all of these things because I finally let go of negativity, you know, mm, and just tried mm. to be more positive and really took a chance on myself, you know. And you said something earlier, and this that ties into what you're saying now. You you were in position when the opportunity presented itself. That's exactly. that's something that a lot of people miss. You know, they they fuss and moan, and, oh my god, my life didn't happen. But there were probably times when the when the the thing was supposed to intersect with you and you missed it. You went, you know, you went left to right, but you were in position. You caught that thing, and you made the right decision at that time. That's what brought you to them, and now here you are, seventeen years later, successful. So position makes a difference, right? Yeah, and a lot of people have an idea of how they want their success to look and how you're going to get there, and that's the wrong way to view it. Mm. My success came by doing one gig on a Sunday night for a group I didn't even know who it was. You know mm. what I'm saying? That's mm. what led me to the peaks. You mm. know, some people ain't mind, you know, I'm going to play drums somewhere and then somebody's going to see me and then they're going to want me to go on tour. No, it's about being available mm. and being personable and being a servant to actually get you in front of the people you need to be in. You know, even to this it. day, man, me and Will I am is tight like this. But when he calls me, I don't, I don't, you know, I have my own accolades, but I would never in a million years try to put myself above him because I respect this man and what he's given me, you know? Mm. You know what I'm saying? So you always present yourself in a humble place because those things from kings will come to you. You ain't gotta do nothing. Just be wow. good and be prepared for when your time comes. That's all you gotta do. Wow, wow. That's such a blessing, man. I, I love hearing stories like that. Love, love, love that, love that, love that. Um, so, so it kind of curtails me to the question, and I think we answered it, but I want to kind of dive into it a little bit differently. You were originally a drummer, and, and you were working with Richard Young, Laura Fearson, uh, and, and did, was that the moment where you felt like, I want to be a producer, or when did the actual transition from, I'm going to be a drummer, I want to land on a tour, to I'm going to be a producer, and that's where I'm going to follow to do that, my dream. When did that transition actually happen? Well, I think I've always had been kind of a producer, but didn't really know it. Like I said, in high school from programming and doing all, all those wonderful things, uh, I guess I had it in me. And then going to college, you know, majoring in music production engineering, I produced several things uh, in college, um, even a, a, a church recording, like a 150 voice choir live recording in Boston that um, at about what 19 years old that I was in charge of uh, to produce a live recording from finances to paying everybody to rehearsing everybody. So kind of the production things kind of happen organically. Mm -hmm. And then of course working with um, Young Lord, uh, being able to work under him, doing beats with him. And I think it all snowballed up until when I got the gig with the Peas, went on tour, and then start playing some of my beats that I've I've done with the with the band, and then playing it for the Peas and Ferg and App and Tab, and then that's where it really really took off because Will took me on his wing and we started to write together, and then after that he started asking me to produce, and wow. then, like I said, wow. it, it led me the evolution of things with I'm a B and a whole bunch of plaques and 
Man, um, that's such a blessing. Sorry. That's such a blessing. What do you, you what do you think you've got? I, I hear what you learned from Richard Young Lord. You had a lot that you learned early on from him. What do you think you learned from Will I Am? What's the what's the biggest lesson you think you learned working with him? Because he's a he's a mega producer, but a good man as well. What did you learn from that time with him? Man, I'm still learning with that dude because he's ever changing. <clears throat> um, oh man, he he like don't sleep I don't, I don't understand how he does everything he's like a vampire but i'll say yeah he's a vampire he ain't got no kids yet so he good <laughs> that's what that is he ain't, he ain't got no kids he ain't got to worry about nothing else yeah it's just him right yeah, that solves that a vampire right now until you get them kids but i mean mm-hmm. he taught me a lot of great lessons man he that he's the one who really um refined my pop ear and and the less is more concept you know sometimes you know we're do beats and sometimes you get into musician mode so you feel like you want to add a lot of stuff to the song and he's like man i want you to do me a beat right but i don't want you to have no more than eight eight tracks of music oh no more eight instruments that's it that's all i want i'm like oh okay wow. but you know like some of our biggest songs are those songs that are really spacious like that like mm-hmm. your my humps like your i'm a bees mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Like your Ritmo, that's you know one of their biggest songs of this year. Mm-hmm. So um, I mean, he he taught me the pop sensibility about music, how to translate it, and also how to top line it. What you should do, phrasing uh, about hook structure. You know, I got a feeling that one, that song is one big ass hook. I mean, it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know? and, and, and once you get it in your head, it's stuck forever, right? Exactly. Like. He's the king of that. <laughs> he he can really write a hook. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. Wow. Well, man, you know, I, when I think about your transition, you go from drummer to composer to producer, and then you go to music director. I mean, you're adding another hat. How in the world did you transition from producer to music director? How'd that happen? Well, the music director... Uh, title came in from my good friend Fatima Robinson. You know, Fatima Robinson has worked with everybody under the sun. Uh, everybody. She's a legendary choreographer, uh, creative director. And while I was playing drums with the Peas, she always um, took a liking to me. You know, we cool, you know. Mm-hmm. And she's like, you know what, man? You could be a musical director. We need to work. I'm just like, okay. I've never done it before. Uh-huh. So my first artist that I musical direct along with Fatima was an uh, artist from the UK named Cheryl Cole. Mm-hmm. She had um, a tour called the Million Lights Tour, and that was my first MD gig. Um, and pretty much, like I said, from dealing with being a delegator of people and dealing with a large number of people, I'm a good you know, guy that can t- give people tasks and t- problem solve. I'm, I'm kind of mm-hmm. good at that. So that was my first gig to be like, okay, how are we going to do this? I've never done this before. And uh, me and my engineer, John Norton, uh, we kind of figured it out. Um, that was the start that gave, you know, gave me the confidence to say, hey, I can do this. Mm-hmm. You know, so it went from a, um, a Cheryl Cole to Miguel to Estelle to Fifth Harmony. All of those ladies individually I've MD'd for. Uh, Fifth Harmony, who else have I done? Uh, oh, Megan Trainer on her first album. I was wow. her MD. All about, uh, all about that bass? Exactly, yep. Wow. Anything from that album on live shows, that's all me. Um, <laughs> I love that record. The record was hot. Yeah, that was a great record, man. <laughs> and and um, like I said, it kind of kind of put two worlds together for me. My live Backstreet Boys? World. Oh yeah! You did. Let me not forget Backstreet Boys. Come on! <laughs> wow! Oh, How man. was that yeah. tour, man? The last one um, that they, they did, twenty nineteen, the uh, DNA tour. Yeah, that's one of the one of my proudest moments as a musical director. Uh, mm. That show was amazing. Um, working wow. with uh, legendary choreographers and creative directors, Rich and Tone. Mm-hmm. Uh, they dance with Michael Jackson and I mean everybody, everybody. Wow! Wow! That tour was amazing because they gave me the opportunity to do what I do. Mm-hmm. You know, 
They gave me my parameters. And one thing I love about Backstreet Boys, they're very, um, they're very hands on with the mm -hmm. process. And they, they'll let you know if they don't like something. They'll like, hey, try this, try that, take this song, mm -hmm. mix it with this. So they mm -hmm. give you feedback, which is great. And it helps me to make the product that much better when I have the artist uh, enthusiasm in, nice. involved, you know, nice. and their vision nice. involved. And nice. that, if y'all haven't seen DNA Backstreet Boys tour, please check it out. It's online. <laughs> and it is I'm about no to check band. it out now. It's no band. It's all pre recorded. Really? That's the whole how thing? good it is. Wow. The whole thing. But you would never know that it was pre-recorded all uh, live band me and, except and for the vocals that they are singing though exactly yep okay yeah okay all music is is uh is uh pre-recorded no live band but all their vocals and stuff like that yes live crazy man that's crazy i, I didn't even know that that's crazy wow yeah wow yeah, well, i mean these days though it's, it's it's expensive to, to hire a band though no so yeah yeah, and that, and that's my my dilemma. But a good thing with being a musical director, I kind of have to be the medium for both sides. I understand management; and the artists got budgets, and they have to you know uh, work within those numbers. But then I also represent the musicians too to make sure they get a fair wage for the work that mm -hmm. they do. Um, you know, I've had some musicians you know give me a break on some things because you know they down with me and they just want to be a part of the project. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when I can give my guys the, the proper rates and the majority of the time I do, mm -hmm. um, you get, you know, you get experiences like the DNA tour, man. It, that was mm -hmm. amazing. And um, they really invested in getting it done right. And that investment made them a whole lot of money. <laughs> nice, nice, man. Nice. <laughs> wow. Wow. I'm going to have to, I'm going to look up this tour now just because you said that. I'm going to oh, have to watch do. it. I'm going to have to, I'm like, that's my boy. My boy in the back did that one. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right man like last question and I, and I appreciate you taking all the time man because I, I know how how valuable time is i really do so i appreciate you just sharing your story and people see that you can accomplish their impossible um you know right now you've accomplished a lot you've worn many hats you've been the drummer you've been the, the organ player you've been the the songwriter you've been the producer you've been the music director now are there any more hats left to wear like what's next for keith harris well, I just put on a new hat. I'm an artist now. Uh oh. I just uh -oh. Yeah, I released my <laughs> first project on August 28th of this year called The Keith Harris Experience Volume 1. What? You should check it out. I'm going to definitely check it out on Spotify. It's everywhere. everywhere I'm going to go check it out. Goes, as soon as we get off this, I'm checking it out. Yeah, wow. so I got great, great songs and great features from Estelle, uh, Jordan Sparks. Uh, and my and my homeboy that I grew up with from the block, my boy Raynard Hughes, aka Church Boy. He's <laughs> like he has he has the voice of Teddy Pendergrass for this this generation. What? <laughs> what? You know I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to go listen to it right after this. You know that, right? Oh no, you 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 will. What you yes. should do though, you have to listen to it to start your day, and it's definitely gonna get you going. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So you heard it first here, everybody. Go get the Keith Harris experience today. Go check it yes. out on Spotify, wherever you get your music, iTunes, whatever, Amazon Music. Go listen to it. Support my boy Keith Harris. Check it out. Please do. Please do. I got babies to feed. <laughs> <laughs> most importantly, most importantly, you're supporting a person who's a real human being, who's walked through some stuff, who's fought to get here. He's not some joker. He's out here working hard. He's grinded and he's earned his living. And now he's doing what he loves. And he's chased his impossible. And now it's possible for you too. So let's make sure we support him and make sure to support all the way artists out there that are working hard. Right? Right, Keith? I appreciate that and amen to that. Yes, sir. And and, and one last thing, I really appreciate that you, you stuck with the church all that time, man. I know that, that God's an important part of your life too. The faith still makes a difference to you. And that's that's a biggie in my world as always. So I appreciate you uh you know, you, you making sure you, you came back and forth to church to grind out when you was playing. You was dedicated, man. So that, that faith goes a long way, you know? Yep. You can never forget where you come from and the people that supported you and propped you up to get you where you are. So I, I would yes, never sir. forget that. I will never forget those people. And um, 
they still support me to this day. So yes, it, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Well, man, blessings to you and the family. You guys stay safe. No COVID. Wash those hands. And everybody else that got to watch the segment, we appreciate you. God bless. We'll see you next time. Alan Chasing the Impossible. Have a great one, y'all.